Welcome back. Once again, I'm your host, Carl Rising, and today we are going to talk about how candida moves through the body. Now, we discussed in the last video about how candida is a single cell, half animal, half plant microorganism that is symbiotic with the human body at about 5% of the body's roughly 100 trillion microorganisms. We're 10% human cells, 90% bacteria and fungus. Every animal is a walking fungal bacterial system, ecosystem with a dream. It's all we are. And we gotta keep this in mind while we're trying to balance our systems. Now, if candida is overfed, overgrows, causes a litany of problems, First thing we might experience is a little bit of bloating and constipation, uh, followed up by symptoms of something referred to as leaky gut. Leaky gut is when the candida pushes out through the intestinal lining in small places. And it can travel through the body, both in the bloodstream and in an organ discovered about a year ago called the interstitium. The interstitium is an interconnected layer of lymph sacs that runs underneath your entire set of skin, it, your suit of skin, set of skin, it's collectible, your suit of skin, which is our largest organ in the first place and largest detox organ. Uh, and. It also lines your lungs and your intestinal tract, meaning that it gets out of it, it, out, out of the, the intestine proper into the interstitium, and it can either get out into the tissue, or it can get straight just into the interstitium and travel that way. This can cause, like I said, a litany of problems. Uh, if it overgrows in the small intestine and doesn't get out often enough because of constipation, we can end up with Crohn's disease, which is inflammation of the small intestine lining, buildup of scar tissue. Um, a lot of it, you're either constipated or you have uh, horrible diarrhea. It goes back and forth, and chronic fatigue, of course, associated with any candida overgrowth problem. Uh, lots of pain, lots of just general discomfort, life gets harder, chronic inflammation reduces our dopamine, and, and we just don't feel like doing anything. Our entire drive and motivation dips. Uh, if it works its way up from the small intestine through the stomach because of improper pH in the stomach, uh, it can give you an esophagus, an, an esophagus infection. If the candida in the mouth overgrows, especially if it's fed by candida traveling throughout the body and other places, we can have thrush, which is a thick white coating of candida culture on the tongue, on the roof of the mouth, on the cheeks common with infants that have candida problems. It's often passed to the mother um, via the nipple um, and it usually comes from the mother's diet and the mother's health problems, the mother's intestinal balance, as well as the father's immune settings. Because blood type and immune settings come through the, the fraternal line, the father line. Um, the patriarchal fraternal, this brother, the patriarchal line of genetic information gives blood type and immune settings. Uh, if it travels to the nails, we will have nail fungus. Uh, usually before that, we will have arthritis in the joints, though, because the joints are a much softer tissue. It's easier for the candida to get in there, pervade, and build up scar tissue for itself to live in, and that will be often be followed by things like nail fungus, either in the fingernails or in the toenails. And if you have it in the toenails, in the finger, especially in the fingers, uh, without 
having just constant exposure to, to mold and such in your shoes or in your feet, that usually means it's traveled all the way down. It is usually at this point going to be in the joints. You'll have some stiffness, some cracking, some pain, some swelling in the joints. Um, if it gets into our organs, a lot of naturopaths, a lot of scientists are starting to really take seriously the notion that that is the cause of lupus, which is an autoimmune disease in our organs. Now, candida will cause an autoimmune problem regardless of where it ends up in the body because it's so hard to kill. And, you know, as I mentioned in the last video, it is half animal, half plant. Its biofilm is half animal protein, half plant protein, meaning that without the enzymes to break down cellulose, plant matter, which is, you know, cellulase, hemicellulase, these, these plant digesting enzymes, it's really hard to break up candida's biofilm and expose it so that our antibodies can take it apart properly. Otherwise it just grows and grows and grows, especially if we're eating a lot of sugar and starch, uh, a lot of things that will uh, also uh, not just feed it, but going towards inflammation like pork, and nightshade vegetables, which are tomato, potato, eggplant, and all peppers. But sweet potatoes are okay. I will say sweet potatoes are okay. And if you have to do a tomato, do an heirloom tomato, avoid ketchup, avoid concentrated tomato sauces. The sugars, the night sit, and the nightshade compound concentrations are really high in those. Uh, and sugar in ketchup is just an insane amount for what you're eating. Uh, ketchup has been declared in Europe to just not be a healthy food, uh, especially the ketchup sold in America with high fructose corn syrups and the, those really just way too much concentrated sugar and that's great fuel for candida that's living anywhere in your body um, if it gets up to the brain which there is a microbiome in the brain it's newly discovered you know, microbiome bacteria in the brain that are supposed to be there even Ooh, supposed to be there so relax it's not we're not talking meningitis no not in this video um, but an overgrowth of candida, cutting out the bacteria that make the enzymes that fuel your immune system isn't going to help with me, whether or not you're going to get meningitis. Well, maybe a little more on the weather side, but still. Um, if it gets into the prostate, we'll have prostatitis. If it gets into the kidneys, we can end up with cysts in the kidneys, lacking kidney function. If it ends up uh, getting into the skin, we'll have eczema and psoriasis, we'll have acne problems, especially dealing with diminished immune function. Uh, and when I say diminished immune function, I should say diminished immune, like, targeting and function via enzymes. The immune system can get really ramped up in these situations, and that's how we have an autoimmune situation. In the first place, the immune system is, is struggling, trying to kill candida that's in the wrong place in the body, or if the immune system has made its way in through the leaky gut openings into the intestine where it's not supposed to be. So the soldiers are in the munitions factory where the enzymes they use are made. They're not supposed to be in there. That's its own environment with thousands of species of bacteria that live in balance like, like the Amazon basin. Um, as above, so below. Uh, we live in a fractal universe. We've, we, we are ourselves a microcosm of the larger ecosystem micro, uh, macrocosms. Um, I, this will also diminish our ability to break up plant matter in general. If we are low on the bacteria that make cellulase and hemi, cellulase enzymes
then we do not have the uh, base material constituents for defense against plant matter of any variety. And that's going to not just be candida, that's also going to be pollen. and mold. Plant matter is plant matter when you're looking at enzymatic activity. If we can't break down one, we're usually struggling with the ability to break down others. The body will get overburdened with plant matter and mucus production is going to spike. Inflammation to keep it from getting into the bloodstream is going to spike. Um, not very pleasant I'm sure a lot of people have a litany of these problems together. Uh, usually if you have Crohn's, you've already got allergies. You, you'll often have acne at least. Uh, nail fungus is a, is a risk. Um, you know, the largest concentration of candida is in the small intestine. It's supposed to stay in the small intestine um, at the proper balance. This is the key to health. It's the cornerstone to health. Keeping your candida from overgrowing, getting out of control, going from the single cell states, the little individual disparate bits of bacteria just living in the small intestine, trying to make a home uh, and having a hard time overgrowing because of the pH that's supposed to be proper in the intestinal tract from the stomach acid and from the lack of bacteria producing cellulase or hemicellulase enzymes to break apart the biofilm and keep them down. Our small intestine is supposed to be such a hostile place for them that they cannot get above that 5% threshold with a good diet that supports proper intestinal balance and proper intestinal pH. Thank you. I hope you found this very helpful. And if you did, please like, share, or subscribe. Feel free to donate. The information is in the box below. Um, and uh, once again, I'm your host, Carl Rising. Happy to bring you this information. Thank you.